This is my third generation animatronic Wheatley. And this video actually isn't about him because I already made that main video and you should totally go watch it. This is about a minor detail that you might have noticed that I didn't discuss. He's mounted to the ceiling on his very own management rail. And I wanna talk about how I designed that and what it does. I also want to answer your frequently asked questions like, how much did I cost? How much did I cost? How much did he cost? I'm priceless. How much did he cost to make? Will I be selling personality cores? Uh, are his files available? Uh, what about AI? Am I gonna use AI to bring him more to life? And can I use the animations from the game? I'm also gonna be answering one secret question that you didn't even ask. What happened when I DM'd Stephen Merchant? Nothing. He uh, never even read it. Let's just talk about the management rail. I'm not mad at Steven, I'm just disappointed. Anyway, when I say management rail, what I really mean is the mechanism for attaching Wheatley to said rail. The rail itself is nothing special. In the game, it pretty much looks like an inverted train rail. But for my version, I've decided to use V-slot aluminum extrusion. This way, I can use these simple Delrin rollers for the carriage. But which variant of rail am I going for? You see, there are two carriage designs in the game. When you first meet Wheatley, he's attached by a simple rod that just sort of clips into his body. Eventually, when he's ready to come off his rail, he's on a much larger, more advanced robotic arm. And while I'd love to make something closer to the robotic arm, I have a normal eight foot tall ceiling, and I want Wheatley to be at or above my eye level. So for my design, I split the difference. To explain, let's take a look at my design over in Onshape. I've got a rough mock-up of the area in my apartment where I'm going to mount the rail. I've got two 4040 extrusions on top of each other, and these are mounted via bent sheet metal brackets to the ceiling. The carriage is made up of several large 3D prints paired with steel sheet metal components that I ordered from Send Cut Send. This large 3D print makes up the main body of the carriage as it has eight hexagonal bores for M5 lock nuts. These provide mounting points for M5 screws that hold the V-wheels that ride on the extrusion. Like me, this print is under a lot of stress, so I designed it to be sandwiched between two metal plates, a thin upper plate and a six millimeter thick lower plate that forms the main structure of the carriage. This way, the tension from the weight of the mechanism and Wheatley is counteracted by the compression from the large bolts. If only I could solve my own anxiety so easily. Now the upper plate has a pillow block bearing that provides support for the driven axle that is attached to two rubber wheels which run against the side of the extrusion. This shaft is driven by a geared motor that mounts to another thin plate below the core plate. This mechanism allows the carriage to move back and forth along the rails. And in order for Wheatley to spin around, I needed some way to rotate the shaft that he mounts to. So I'm driving that motion with this huge servo. It's slow and powerful, which is needed because Wheatley weighs about four kilograms, which means he'll have a lot of inertia when spun around. So a higher gear reduction will resist any unwanted motion. I've designed Wheatley to run off a single three cell lithium polymer battery at about 12 volts. And while there's technically room for a battery within his body for my own sanity and safety, I decided it best to keep the lithium polymer battery external. This way I can quickly swap it out and charge it. But how does power actually get to the motors? You see, I could have sprung for a simple plug and socket, but I recently found these magnetic power connectors that are, in technical terms, totally sick. So I decided that I would use a matching set of six connectors to transfer power from the management rail into Wheatley. And if you recall, they told me never, never, ever to disengage myself from my management rail or I would die. So yeah, my version of Wheatley will die if disconnected. Now the magnetic power clamp hinges on this large steel bracket that screws onto the base of the tube. The bracket has a 3D printed lip that matches with the notch on Wheatley's mounting plate. So I can easily align him to the bracket and then screw him in with these four large thumb screws. So now he's mounted, but how's the carriage controlled? For this whole setup, I've got an ESP8266 mounted in the lower enclosure. This leaves a lot of wireless options for control, but for right now, I can use my handy Wrangler that has an ESP32 inside. Using the ESP Now protocol, I can easily pass the joystick information to allow full control of the carriage. If you want to design and build things like this, you need a good CAD program, which is why I'm excited that today's sponsor is Onshape. Onshape is available to try for free with a link in the description. Whether your company wants to evaluate a more modern cloud-based CAD system, or if you just need a design program for personal 3D printing projects, Onshape is for you. 
Onshape is built entirely on the cloud, and because of that, Onshape users have some unique advantages. For example, engineers and designers are able to work together in Onshape at the same time on the same design across the planet, ensuring there's a single source for any design. And Onshape runs in a browser. Even highly compute intensive operations like finite element analysis and rendering are done completely in the cloud in Onshape, making the design process faster and easier than ever. If you or your company wants to test Onshape, engineers and designers can get the Onshape professional plan for free up to six months. And the base free plan is available to everyone for unlimited non-commercial use. All right, you've got questions and I've got answers. So how much did Wheatley cost to make? Now it's hard to say because I've been developing over several years and I've probably spent over $4,000. But I can definitely say that Wheatley Mark III costs at least $3,000. That's nearly 2,000 in servos, 800 in 3D printed SLS nylon, and the rest in hardware and other bits and bobs that are necessary for his design. Now, of course, you could try and whittle that down by printing his shells out of PLA on a normal 3D printer. It would just take a lot more time to develop, but that's just the way it is. Animatronics are expensive, and that's actually a really uh, affordable cost. I will say cost because price implies that he's for sale, which leads me into uh, question number two, am I going to sell personality cores? Short answer, no, unfortunately. So I actually asked Valve about this possibility and they said no, but they didn't slam the metaphorical door in my face. They actually responded to my emails and their issue wasn't selling Wheatley as a kit or product in theory. The issue is complexity. My design has over 450 components and that's a lot of complexity for a do-it-yourself product and certainly overbearing for a finished product. And I'm just one guy. Even if there were an assembly line, it's too much because I might have said that I only spent $3,000, but that includes no labor. If I were to actually include labor to hand make one, it would be tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, hey, hey, if someone wants to, I mean, Valve said no, but if someone wants to pay me a lot of money to make a personality core, you, you know, there's ways to reach me. Now, that being said, question number three, am I going to share the files? Yes, I actually already shared them on the main video, but I'll link them down below here. I've also updated that link to include the code, but bear in mind, this isn't a tutorial. It's, you know, it's just a guide. And I should let you know that it's a step file, which means you can actually play with the model and edit it. It's not just some horrible mesh of polygons that I'm keeping under lock and key. I really hope that people make fun things with it and you should totally join my Discord. Also, shout out to my Patreon supporters for making uh, it possible for me to give away things for free. I love you guys. Join my Patreon. All right, next up, will I be using AI or ChatGPT or something to bring him to life? And this is a tricky one because it would be really fun and I'm sure it would do great on YouTube. Uh, one, uh, I designed him to be an animatronic and I'm really happy with how he turned out. I could feature creep this project forever and add more and more and more and more features, but the truth of the matter is he's never going to live up to the performance that Stephen Merchant gave in the creation of Portal 2. And about that, Wheatley is a character, but the voice of Wheatley is Stephen Merchant. He's an actor and a comedian and someone that I respect. And I don't think it's okay to take the assets uh, that Valve paid him to create and create a voice model without his consent. That's just not okay and not something that I'm going to do. And uh, that's where I stand on that. Now, that being said, I can still create an original character and use someone's voice who does consent and make a personality core come to life, but I don't have any plans to do that right now. I want to work on other things. All right, this next one comes up a lot. Can I just use the animations from the game to animate Wheatley? I wish so badly that the answer were yes, but it's no, and for a multitude of reasons. First of all, I'm not an animator. I wish I was, but it's just not a skill that I have the time to develop. And even if I was a source guru, there are more problems involved in extracting the animations and making that in any way useful for my actual robotic character. Uh, first of all, he's got the wrong skeleton. My Wheatley design is mechanically different from the game model. 
The game model has a mechanism called a Stuart platform that is completely different kinematically from my design. So even if I could extract the animations from the game files, there's no way to map the animations onto my rig. It's possible to map similar characters that have similar bones, like, you know, the animation from a gorilla to a person, but this would be like mapping the animation from a gorilla to a scorpion. They just don't work and move in the same way. Now, the other issue is that some animations don't exist. There are times when Wheatley disappears and is still speaking, but obviously they don't need to animate him there, so there's no accompanying voice line, which makes it less valuable for me to spend time trying to extract animations. Also, he's got the wrong skeleton. Now, didn't I just say that? Uh, but you might have noticed that halfway through the game, when Wheatley takes control of the facility, his model changes ever so slightly. One, his handles disappear and his shells flare out. And it's possible that they use the same animations for the handles, but probably not. I don't know. Uh, once again, I'm not a source guru. So that is a separate rig that would require separate transformations to make uh, adapted to my model. And last but not least, even if all of those issues weren't a problem, the biggest one is time and physics, but not space. I don't know, don't think about it too much. You see, Wheatley in the game doesn't have to deal with physics. They program him to have physics when it's relevant, but otherwise his parts don't have inertia and one, he can clip through himself and he can move very, very quickly. And if I'm trying to synchronize my Wheatley to a voice line in the game, that means he needs to move fast or faster than the in-game model, which he doesn't. So if he starts an animation and completes it in a set amount of time, I can only come close and have stilted motions that approximate the in-game animations, but can never be 100% accurate. So it's still gonna look off. And that's just not something I can change because unfortunately, I live in the real world and I have to obey the laws of physics, but I still think I can get some really interesting animations out of Wheatley. And I hope you enjoyed how I animated it in the main video. And this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.